two years ago, I bought this. And then I bought another one. Why did I buy two? Why did I buy two? So you might be wondering what this actually is. This is the Garmin Overlander. It's a GPS, well, navigation device. I bought this with my own money. Both of them actually. We'll get to the bottom of why I bought two. I'm actually still thinking about why did I buy two? The question is, is this any good and should you get one? Now we're gonna ditch the manual and skip all the boring special features because none of us are gonna use that. 90% of us blokes are gonna jump in the vehicle, pull this out of the box and we're gonna go traveling. How good is it? Let's hit the tracks and we'll find out. First thing you need to know, out of the box, when you turn this device on, you'll end up with this home screen. Now on the home screen you have drive and you have explore. Now drive is just like your normal sat nav, like most sat navs have, you just follow your nose, you drive around, and it's just like a street view. But what I use is explore, and that is all I'll drive with, because it gives you like a topographic map, and all the tracks that are listed on the map are on here so you can sort of plan ahead take your tracks but some tracks are not on the map when they're not on the map you can add the track by doing tracking this is how I add a track to the map that's not on the actual map this is how we do it <laughs> track recorder you enter your menu and then you go to track recorder and then you simply press start what that's going to do is start recording to your map. This is going to record until you press stop. Now, unlike other devices, when you press record a track and then you stop the car, you turn it off and the power ceases to go to your device, it stops recording and you have to start it again. This thing will never stop, even if the power goes off. It will fire up again and go, oh yeah, I was recording last time, so I'm going to keep continue to record until you press stop and you save that track. Once you save the track, it is in there for good. So if you find a wicked campsite, you find a wicked track, and you want to go back there one day, later on again, it's going to be burnt into your map on your device. So long as you press save at the end. Not only that though, you can check average speed, your average moving time, your stop time, your maximum speed, and the distance you've traveled. If you're running bigger tires in your four wheel drive, you don't need to correct your odometer, you can use the actual device itself as well. And I use that as well, all the time, to cross-reference. All right, let's head on down this track and see what we can find. This is the best thing it doesn't do. It doesn't gl 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 glitch glitch unlike other devices I've had before. Now a previous device I've used, I'm not going to mention a name, I've gone through five freaking devices glit glitching, fa failing, this thing does not fail. And let me just mention, look at the, the build on it, it's thick. iPads are thinner than this, iPads are more powerful than this, but you've got this device in this thick casing which is can obviously fit a lot more hardware. So I'm guessing that's why this is so non-glitchy. Non non it's a really good operating system. It hasn't failed me, unlike others before. And the best thing it does do, this is so satisfying. Power through here on the stem, these bits here, line up with these, powers it up. There is one thing that's slightly annoying though. When you pull this device out of your vehicle, because it's, it's a good thing to do, you pull it out and you have a discussion with your mates where you're gonna go next. The only problem is, it'll slowly switch off. So you have to constantly 
press the power button on the side just to wake it up again. Now I'm sure there's a setting in there, you can set the, um, the sleep mode or the power setting mode to, you can extend the time, but you don't really want to do that if you leave it in the vehicle. As you can see now, it's powered off. So now I've got to hit this button again. And then it wakes up and then you got to press agree again. And there you go. So that is the only slightly annoying thing about it. I wish it just stayed on a bit longer. One thing I didn't like about the Overland Garmin package was what it came with. So the first one I bought had the ram mount, suction mount, and that sucked big time in a bad way. The second one I bought had its own kind of mount similar to the ram mount suction mount and that also sucked in a bad way so what i've done is i've hard mounted it with using uh, ram mount hardware to the dash itself and it's not going anywhere so in other words i've rammed it even harder you know like ram mounts yeah ram mounts forget about it let's continue our journey I've found a gnarly, scratchy track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pinpoint down and share it with a mate and say, this is a great, this is a great track. <laughs> Come down this track. Add waypoint. Cool track. Dude. It's so cool. There we go, the pin's there. Interesting what you find out in the bush. Block splitter. I'll add this to my axe collection. I've only got 30 axes at home. 31. Anyway, back to this nav device. The only real things you need to know on this device is how to enter the explore mode, self-explanatory, home page. How to enter the track recorder, because that is another important thing, easy to use. The pitch and roll, which you can see, absolutely useless. I don't find it, it's a gimmick. You don't really need it. Apparently, we are 83 degrees, climbing up almost 90 degrees. We're in trouble, people, we're in trouble. One thing though, that I really wanna show you guys, and it's something that I discovered while I was driving, looking for camp campgrounds we press on campgrounds say you are heading north you want to know where there's some campgrounds 20 k's north 21 k's west southwest northwest you get the picture so it tells you in a 360 degree um, range where the nearest camp is but say you have 200 k's left in your tank to drive and you tell your convoy let's go 200 k's more let's find a spot scroll down Till you get to 200 k's, we need a north one, northwest nature reserve. Here's the cool thing, and this is the only time I use the straight nav in conjunction with the explore app. This is what's really cool about this. So press nature reserve, press go. Please drive to highlighted route. Terrible voice, I gotta say. So here is the highlighted route on the straight nav, but you press up here, you get to your explore app. Now, toggle this back to here. Now, that line is put into the Garmin on the actual Explore map. Look at that. It's sending me up here to the Nature Reserve spot. That is a cool feature, which I think is worth knowing. Everything else in this device, just use it as simple as it is. Quick handy tip as well. Even though this thing is so reliable, always carry a paper map. You should not be out here without a paper map. Do not rely on these, no matter how good they are. Now, this thing, in my opinion, is like a cold beer on a hot day. It's just good. Now, I do think this technology will be superseded very soon. And when I say soon, five years from now, all the satellite technology, our mobile devices, is gonna make these things pretty much useless. But for now, until that happens up there, this is the best that I've found so far. And it's also the reason why I bought two. But buying two was a dumb move because the maps and my travels are split on both devices. So unless I read this complex manual, there might be a way of syncing these two up and then it's all good. But I'm not gonna read that. None of us are gonna use that. 90% of us blokes are gonna jump in the vehicle, pull this out of the box, and we're gonna go traveling. And would you buy one? Comment down below. Don't be a, like me and buy two. All right, see you later. <laughs>